Hello, welcome back. If you've been joining us for uh, Sewing Street all morning or if you're just tuning in for Yarn Lane, lovely to have you company this afternoon. Uh, my name's Vicky. We've got one hour jam packed. We've moved Yarn Lane now to four days, by the way. We're expanding. And um, I'm really, really, really thrilled that we've had so much incredible feedback. Um, and we're really, really excited to grow, grow the show even more so. So thank you for all of your messages and all of your support. Uh, it is a brilliant place to whether you're 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 starting a, a new hobby or a new skill whether you are getting back into to knitting and crochet I think it's the perfect time for us to be launching this as well over the last few months with everything that's been going on in the world it's it is something that I know a lot of people really really find uh, a lot of sort of serenity and, and, and mindfulness from so um, Let's just do a couple of our housekeeping bits and bobs before we go through the kits for today. So anybody who's shopping uh, over on our Sewing Street page today, if you've been buying on Sewing Street, then you can automatically go over to yarnlane.com, log in with the same details and purchase still with the same postage and packaging. So it's still one PMP across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane all day. If you do go to our website, yarnlane.com, this is what it looks like. It looks very, very similar to the Sewing Street one. You can so search through um, what's new in, the yarn, the kits, needles and hooks, patterns and books. So you can shop via category, or you can see what's coming up on today's show uh, by skipping ahead, clicking watch live, scrolling down, and this is everything that we've got. So it's always worth having a bit of a, a sort of a, a glance through and checking out on anything that you might need. Your different crochet hooks, different sizes, all of the different patterns, including the first ever, this is the first time we've ever done a crochet bag. And it's a rucksack. We'll start with this one because I know that we're not going to, we've got loads that we want to cram in in the next hour. So this isn't one that we're going to be particularly focusing on. And I don't want anybody waiting for this because I know how popular it's going to be. The backpack behind me is absolutely gorgeous. I love the colorways, um, the purples, the yellows, the, the gray is very on trend, isn't it? Very, very on trend. So you have got, um, the bundle I think itself is called silver. Uh, it is your gray, your purple and your yellow. A mariner yarn is so, so soft. So this is your double knit and you get two of the yellow, two of the purple and three of your gray. Plus, you do get your Mariner's crochet pattern as well. So if you do know how to, uh, to follow a crochet pattern, then absolutely go for it. This isn't just for the bag, by the way. You also get the pattern on how to do the hat. Um, I know that this is one that Catherine is going to talk us through today. Because I always just think, obviously with the bag, one, I didn't even think that you could make a crochet bag, which is so exciting, isn't it? But when you think of something that you're wearing, obviously it's got to fit. It's got to fit round the sort of cone sort of head, shape of your head. <laughs> well, not cone head, but do you know what I mean? No, it's got to fit round that shape. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah, the hat, we're going to talk through how you do that with Catherine, basically. <laughs> Yeah, look, it is a really bad picture of the hat. There he is. It's, um, it is a lovely hat, though. It's just um, not on a head, there, so you can't really see it. I should try it on, really, shouldn't I? Um, but all these colours are lovely. And so this is enough yarn to be able to do the bag and the hat. £14.99 and pence for three of your double knit grey, two of your silver and two of your yellow. Now, we can also offer it to you in a different colourway. Uh, already bundled with your pattern, um, this time in the navy colourway that's here. So you get two of your navy, two of your white, and three, three, she says, three of the navy. Uh, plus you also have, of course, your pattern, uh, which we will talk through with Catherine in just a moment. In fact, what we're going to do, because we've also got the shawl, we've got um, the, the scarves, we've got mittens, we've got loads that we want to fit in in the next hour. It is all on pre-order if you want to get ahead and reserve your place. But let's just start with um, the hat and the, uh, the bag, if that's okay. Catherine. So this is crochet today, isn't it? Yes. We're doing a bit of knitting and crochet. We've got a bit of both. Okay. This one's crochet. Uh, your double knit yarn needs a three and a half mil crochet hook. Okay. If you haven't got is one. Is that for both the, the bag and the hat? Yes, it is. 
Okay. Yes. The bags, <laughs> I don't know why. I've never the, ba really the bag's about not it. as hard as you think. Really? Yeah. It's all your different pieces are rectangles or squares. I mean, if you look at the one behind you, the front and the back, the pocket, they're all flat, yeah. squarish, rectangular pieces. And you're actually only really got one stitch going on. You've got chains and half trebles. Oh, okay. So it's really quite a nice, straightforward make. And then do you stitch them together? And then you stitch them together. Right. You sew them up. Yes. Nice. Yeah, so it, it's easier maybe than it looks. So I'm not going to demo anything on the bag for you, but I'm going to show you on the hat how you increase in the round because sometimes people get a little bit confused with that and then the half treble that I'm doing on this is what gets used in the bag as well so if you don't know a half treble I will show you that too. Um, now I've started it with the pale blue actually the main colour is the navy I just think the lighter colour probably shows up a little bit better okay. on television to show you which is why I've um, picked that one. So what I've done to start off with is I've done six chain and join them together in a ring. And I've done 11 half trebles round that first ring. You can see that there. And then I've started my second round. So on your second round, you're going to do two half trebles into every chain space. When you look at the top of your crochet, you can see a little V shape, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's the top of each stitch. Right. So you're going to do two stitches into each one. Now a half treble, you put your yarn over before you push it through the top of your uh, last stitch. Pull a loop back through, so you've got three on your hook. Then yarn over and all three loops off at once. And then we're going to do another one into that same so space. So wrap once. Wrap under. one in and pull it through yarn over all three at once. Right. So on this second round... What's this one called, sorry? A half treble. A half treble. When you, when you do your granny squares, you do a full treble, but this is a half treble. Okay. So it's a longer stitch, but it's a little bit denser than a treble. So in each, top of each stitch, on that second round, that's what I'm doing all the way around. This is why I'd done part of it and I'm just finishing it off just to show you. When you get to the end, to join it up, you're going to do a slip stitch into the top of the chain that you started the round with. Now when you go in the round like this and you go round and round, you usually do a little couple of chain. Your pattern will tell you, you do two chain at the start of each round. That counts as your first stitch. Mm -hmm. People often get a little bit confused. Why, why am I doing some chain? It brings your hook up to the right height for the size of the stitch that you're making and it, it gives you a beginning and an end of your round to uh, fasten to. Right. Do you ever use stitch markers or counters, what they're called? Yes. Yeah. So they're useful as well. If sometimes you um, are doing a, in a round yeah. <laughs> and it's very easy to miss the beginning and end and just yeah. keep going round and round and round in a spiral. Yeah. Um, so a stitch marker can help you mark that, absolutely. Right. So then your third row to increase again we're going to start with our two chain. We're going to do a half treble into the same space. Okay. Then we're going to do a single half treble into the next stitch. So there. And then two into the one after. So on this round, so on the second round, you did two stitches into every one. And then yep. on this one, you do one into the chain, two into the next one, one and a two, one and a two. Does that make sense yep, to you? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I'm following. <laughs> do you find that if you, um, with crochet, it's more sort of forgiving that if you, you know how you can go, you can be knitting and you don't realise that you've got a hole in it until you're quite a few rows down. If you've not done something quite right, is it easier to correct? To um, a crochet is easier to pull down, definitely. Yeah. You know, if you've gone wrong, if you've counted wrong, it's really easy to pull down because you've only got one loop to keep to pick back up. Right. When you go wrong with your knitting, you've got a lot of stitches to try and keep yeah. in the right place. Right, so we go all the way around doing that same thing. And you say, Catherine, you find this, you know, really nice to sit 
and, and do while she's sitting on the sofa. It's actually really yeah, telecraft. Mindful. Nice telecraft. But can you do this while the telly's on? Um, it, depends. it depends. It depends how it uh, with crochet counting. knitting more than crochet uh, because crochet you have to count counting, a lot. Yeah. Um, but often. I don't know about you. My husband puts things on that I don't really want to watch, yeah. but he likes watching. But he doesn't really want me to go off in the other room and do something different. Yeah. He likes, yeah. you know. So I'll sit and do a bit of crochet and half listen to it. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of us do that. Don't yeah, we? absolutely. <laughs> so we're just going to go all the way around like that, and then your next round. So this one we've done. One stitch in one, two in the next one. The next round that we're going to do, we're going to do one stitch in one, one stitch in the next one, two stitches in the next one. Okay. So two where we do a single, then one where we do two in through it. I don't feel like I've explained that terribly well. No, go on. We'll but go I will show again. you as I get round yeah. there. I'm going round as fast as I can. But you can see it's starting to grow, but it's starting to grow flat. Mm -hmm. And anything that you do in a round where you want to increase, you increase like this. this it's the same in every pattern that you um, do this. And with. when you say increase, you don't. it's not necessarily the same as stepping up a row. It's literally getting wider. It is. Okay. So I'm, I am increasing the number of stitches. It tells you at the end of your round how many stitches you should have. So if oh, you're not it. sure if you're doing it correctly, you can go round and you can count the top of those um, stitches, half yeah. trebles, to make sure you've got the right number. So we're going to join there with our slip stitch. Okay. So start off again with a two chain and a half treble. Half treble, yeah, we saw how we did that before. Okay, and then, so we're going to do half treble into this one. Next one along. Just one half treble into the next one along. And then this one, we'll do two. Yes. Okay. Single one in the next one. Single one in the next one two into the next one. So it's allowing you to make that mm -hmm. um, the size grow mm -hmm. nice and equally. You mm -hmm. won't get like fluffy mm -hmm. edges. You can tell if you've gone wrong when you're doing this because it will start to crinkle up. Ah. If you've lost count and you're doing too many increases, it will get all crinkly and it won't lie flat. So you ah. can see if you're doing it. That's a good tip. Correctly. Do you yeah. need to, um, is it important to keep your tension consistent when you're going for, when you're, you're increasing? Yes. I mean, all your crochet and knitting, you're trying to keep a nice even tension. Mm -hmm. People, people crochet in all different ways, but I tell people when they're learning, if they put it around their little finger like that, it will help them to get a nice tension because you want this bit here between your fingers there that you get working that's into, the that's the bit that you want to keep nice and tight. Right. Because then your stitches will stay nice and even. And then as you get into it and you do more and more, I get that I don't bother with my little finger because I can keep it tight. But we all find our way with crochet. People do it in lots of different ways. So I don't want to be the one to say, oh, you've got to do it like this because you'll find your own comfortable way to do right. it. Right, okay. Yeah. I mean, it is one that is, it, I know how addictive it becomes. You can just sit and, and like you say, I know a lot of people who who can't sit on the sofa without doing something with their hands. And these are really beautiful patterns, aren't they? The mariner patterns in particular, I know, are always extremely popular. I mean, I'm no, no expert, but I know we had a couple of messages come through on Facebook, I'm not sure where they've gone, um, saying about the mariner quality of the yarn and the patterns are really good. They're, they're, do you know what, all the little, all the yarn lane demos I've done, I've done with these yarns, and they're lovely. They're really, really, really soft. soft. They're really nice, nice to work with. Um, comes up really nice and evenly, and uh, they're fantastic value as well. Yeah, they're they're really they're fantastic all value. The prices at fourteen ninety nine, you get loads, absolutely loads. Um, I mean, you've got the lovely bag, and you've got your hat pattern, and here you're getting your three navies, two blue and two white. So all of that uh, yarn as well. It's been very, very popular. In fact, this colorway has been more popular than the uh, 
the silver that's behind me, the grey, the silver, the grey, yellow and purple. Uh, they're both beautiful. Do make sure you're checking out on those as soon as you can. Don't forget, once you've made any of your projects, please post it on your online fan page as well because it's so good to see all of your makes. It really, really is. Ha Do you know, right, I'm going to ask you a question just from my point of view because I really, really... I can crochet, I can do my chains, I can do things. It's the patterns that I find quite daunting. How do you make that step into, right, I can crochet, yeah. how do I follow a pattern? Okay, well, you always get a lot of abbreviations in your pattern. Yeah. So, But there's always a little glossary that tells you. Okay. So, ch is chain and DC is double crochet. Yeah. So, as long as you know those stitches, yeah. you know what to do what to do. So for example, on the very first row of this, it tells you to ch, so to chain, and it, that counts as one half treble, and then work 11 half treble into the ring and slip stitch into the top of the two chain. Right, okay. So okay. it doesn't sound, once you know the jargon, the language, yeah, then once it you, does make sense. Once you've got those abbreviations, mm -hmm. it's a case of just following step by step. Uh, and then as you said, often as things get a bit bigger, you'll get little asterisks ah, okay. and it will say, do this so many times or repeat this, the bit between the asterisks. Yeah. So, you, so for example, when we get down to the fifth row, we do two half treble into the next stitch, one half treble into each of the next three stitches, repeat from the start of the, the asterisks to the end. So you just keep doing two half treble into one, one half treble into three. Right just keep doing that same bit over and over. If anybody's seeing that little bit on the overhead, I've highlighted the bits that I need to be able to see when I'm showing you because well, it's, because it's, small, it? because it's it. small writing. So, you know, if you find it hard to follow, highlight the little bit yes. that's the tricky bit or the asterisks that you've got to keep doing. And, and you know what? It doesn't matter if you're slow doing it because no. you're working it out and you're learning. Just oh, we've got go, plenty of time, go, haven't we still? Go at your speed. Absolutely. And it, it is so easy to undo if you get it wrong crochet oh, that's good. you know if i've if i've done that you just do it. oh yeah i'll just take it back to there pick up that loop again off we go again there you go pretty easy amazing yes. uh, just wanted to remind you of the silver colorway um you're getting three of the silver you're then also getting two of the purple and you're getting two of your gold that's a lovely combination that's to make this uh the bag and the hat remember the bag and the hat um, and of course you do also get your mariner crochet pattern for 14 pounds and 99 pence i do love it uh are we ready to move on to the yes shawl? absolutely uh, um right so we've got that beautiful apple green shawl um which is this one love it love it love it love it love it so you have Super chunky yarn in this. Is I was saying to you earlier on, is this um, easier to work with the super chunky yarn? Um, well, it grows faster. If you're someone who oh, who likes likes to get on with it quickly. Yeah. I mean, the bit I've I've prepped the first part. I did that watching the telly. I was probably about an hour. Not very long. Nice, so. yeah. So it does it yeah. really come so together it, quickly. Super chunky is nice because it grows really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So that was, by the way, the green. This is now spice. Um, can I show you that green, though? Because I didn't get to show you before. It's absolutely beautiful colour. Really, really beautiful colour. That's the green, which is the one that the, the shawl was made out of. It's super chunky marina yarn. Four of those balls, plus you get your pattern as well. Now, the spice, which is the one that Catherine's working with, is this one. It's that lovely paprika tone. Love that. I think that's going to suit everybody's skin tone as well, isn't it? It's a lovely warm colour. Really lovely. We've had a really funny message through. Okay, it's not funny to anybody else. It's funny to Cat, though. <laughs> Love the show. I'm a beginner at crochet and watching the demo is really helpful. I was wondering if fabric. Oh no. <laughs> no, the fabric for the blue quilt. No, don't talk about it, Emma. Don't talk about it. It's a bit of a sore subject today. It was on our previous sister show, Sewing Street. Um, 
We should have taken it down, really. It's completely sold out. But thank you for your message. <laughs> I can see why Kat was giggling at that. Thank you for joining us over here, though. And uh, it is so invaluable to have these demonstrations, especially at the moment, isn't it, when we can't go to classes and workshops and things. Yeah, but don't mention that fabric. Um, OK, so that's your paprika, your spice. We also, oh, no, they're the two colourways. They're the two colourways, apple green or spice. Fab. So you've uh, now jumped over to knitting. We're knitting on this one. Yeah, lovely big chunky needles. 12 mil, 12 mil knitting needle. Right. Uh, so is this because of the, the super chunky yarn? You it need is. the bigger needles. Yes, yes. We have got Traditionally, a great selection. the thicker the yarn, the thicker the needle. Amazing. So there you go. These are the uh, the 12 uh, millimeter needles. It's just having the right tools for the job, isn't it? Five pounds, 99. Um, has, has Rebecca sent you any of these ones yet? I haven't, no, they haven't, these those really ones hadn't, hadn't come in at the time that she sent me everything. So sadly, I haven't got those fancy they're ones. Lovely, I have got they? all the other lovely crochet hooks yeah. in that. And I have to say, they're very, very nice to work with. They've got a lovely feel to them, the oh, different crochet hooks. Nice. So I shall be uh, eyeing up the knitting needles, certainly, ah, for a nice. nice show. Yes. So what I did with this, I started it off um, because you start down at the bottom corner on this and you actually uh, knit it in two sections there's a right section and a left section and you start down at the bottom with just two stitches and gradually increase and you've basically got a row by row up to row 38 and then you've got a an That's eight row amazing. pattern that just keeps the pattern going. It looks like lacy, doesn't it? It's really it's nice. lovely. It's really because often you get lacy knits, but they're often in very fine yarn. So this is really nice actually to have quite a nice lacy, interesting pattern to do, mm -hmm. but in a chunky yarn because it means yeah. it'll grow fast, which is great. And also be really, really snuggly, which is what we need at the moment, isn't it? So we've only got 30 stitches along the top, okay, which is great. Um, and there isn't anything too complicated in this pattern. Um, it's just to show you how to make the little holes as you go along, really. So I'm starting at row one of the pattern. I'm going to knit one. Now, I always slip my first stitch off um, just because it gives you a nicer edge. So that gets slipped off. So we're going to knit two. We're going to knit two together. So literally push your needle through both stitches and knit them as normal. Then we're going to put the yarn forward to the front and knit one. So you can see that's creating another, another mm. stitch. Knit one, yarn forward again. Sorry, I lost my place there. <laughs> Slip one, knit one, and then pass the slip stitched over the top. These are creating your little holes and this little raised pattern that comes out. Okay, off. right, do that again. I will do it again because we have to keep doing that to the end. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to knit two. Knit two. We're going to knit two together. The yarn forward, knit one. Yarn forward. Slip one and knit one and pass that slip stitch over. Ah, I'm following. Okay. And then we didn't do it one more time. Mm -hmm. Knit two. Or maybe two more times. Knit two together. Yarn forward. Knit one. Yarn forward. Slip one. Knit one pass the slip stitch over. So it's not actually difficult, but it's quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I like knitting that's interesting. You know, sometimes it's Keeps nice to have thinking. a thing, you just keep doing the same thing over and over. But actually, I quite like knitting where you've actually got, got to, to think, think a little bit about what yeah. you're doing as well. Okay, let's just... And like we were talking about patterns, Vicky, this one, it, you, this little section that we're yeah. doing, knit two, knit two together, etc. It's got a little asterisk and it says, you know, repeat until we get to the end, basically. Oh, so it. you know you're just going to keep doing that little section over and over. Knit one. Pass the slip stitch over and luckily it's worked out. I've got one stitch left and you knit one at the end. Okay. How's that looking? It's looking good. 
Nice. And you've got to follow these eight rows of patterns because it's going to move your holes along. Okay, our reverse row, so when we turn around and we go back across, is lovely and easy. It is literally... Do you find this harder being like left or right-handed? Is it harder when you reverse it and turn your needle around the other way? No, because you're still going. You're still doing the same. You're still you going from to work. everything on your left hand is going on, on your left hand needle is going on to the right hand okay. needle. You're not, you're not doing it the opposite way round. You've just flipped your work. You've just flipped your work. So the reverse row is very easy. It's a knit one. It's purl right to the last stitch and then it's knit the last stitch. That's going to give you a nice, neat edge. It means it won't curl. What's the difference with purl? Is this, I don't feel like this jumper's purl. No. No, it isn't. Your, your jumper is actually stocking stitch, which is knit a row, purl a row. Oh. So there are only two, this is the difference between knitting and crochet. Knitting only has two stitches, knit and purl. Right. But lots of stitches Average. on your needles. Crochet has lots and lots of different stitches, chains, doubles, trebles, half trebles, but only one, only one, loop. one loop. Yeah. A quarter of the stock of the spice colourway has gone. Uh, just go back slightly. A quarter of the stock of the uh, the, the hat and rucksack kit in navy sold as well. Um, but this spice colour is really lovely. And again, it's with that super chunky marina yarn, which is gorgeous. Um, you get your knitting pattern as well. You're getting four of your yarns and then you also have your knitting pattern from Mariner for your lacy shawl. The apple green though, don't let that one pass by. That's the one that um, that the sample's already made up of. Um, that's what it looks like. Isn't it gorgeous? There you go. I Which is, green. I think, a lovely fresh spring colour. Yeah, it is. Really nice. It's a nice big shawl as well, isn't it? It's it's not a scarf. It's bigger than a scarf. It's a super nice chunky big shawl, isn't it? It is. It mm. is. Yeah. Wear it. Put it over your knees in the yeah. evening when it gets chilly. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. How are we doing for time? Because I can show you another row of the pattern if you want, or um, so it's up to you. We've got half an hour, so it's up to you We're with okay. time. What you think? We could do another. Let's do another one of those. Okay. It's just because that was. I, I love seeing that lacy design. I'm <laughs> okay. So I'm on row three of my pattern. I've knitted the first one, we're going to, it's, it's not quite as difficult this row, knit one, knit two together, yarn forward and we're going to knit four, which is sort of the gaps in between the little kind of diamonds of laciness. So, knit one, knit two together, so although you've got a pattern that keeps changing because you do the same little block over and over along the row you start you start to learn it quite easily okay so even though you say you do have to sort of think about it it is still one that you becomes a bit of a sort of production line that you get yes. into the rhythm of yeah. it yeah this is definitely a really nice quick make if you want to, if you want a project that you're going to get done really quickly this is this oh, is nice. the one out of all the ones we've got here today this is yeah. a really nice quick one yeah that's good especially with that nice big chunky yarn one. knit two together just so you know if everybody who's got it yarn in the basket forward. checks out the spice color bay has gone oh half the stock gone half the stock gone. okay right to the end and the last stitch is a knit so that was a nice easy row. Nice. If I just spread it, if I just spread it out, you can see how these diamonds, oh, the yes. diamond is starting to form. See, up that looks here. amazing, doesn't it? It does baffle me. It is. I just find that it's looks clever, so isn't complex. It? You've it's got really two clever. stitches, and look at all the different patterns you can make. That's really what's so, that's what's so cool about knitting. You've only and got two stitches. That's a great thing that patterns done for you. You don't need to worry about trying to work out how to do these patterns yourself. No, nope. it's all there for you. Absolutely. Brilliant. Absolutely. Barbara's asked what size needles you're using. They were 12. 12 mil is what it says on the pattern. Yes. Fab. So really big chunky ones. They're not ones you often have actually, unless you do loads of super chunky knitting. If you do want some, we have got some on the website. Um, they're £5.99. In fact, they're there. Um, and they're in this lovely aubergine colour as well. Uh, just £5.99. Right. So 
shall we jump on to yeah i'm just going to say vicky okay. in old knitting needle sizes that's a two thank you <laughs> yeah because my mom she's like rooted yeah. out a load of old knitting needles and they've got different the numbers ah okay yeah oh i'm pleased you've said that yeah that's so good to know it's a two in old money does your mum knit or crochet um paul yeah, Barbara um, Barbara does uh, knitting and crochet as well. Uh, right, so this is back to crochet. So we've dropped crochet knitting back to crochet for the shawl. Oh, this um, so this is the one. I've got on the little model. I was going to say, I bet you like this one. This is your colour. Yeah, I would wear that one. Big red coat on. I can see you in this shawl. <laughs> That is lovely. And you can have it like that as a shawl or on the mannequin, more of like a poncho-y style, just throw it around and have it more of a, a, as a poncho, which is lovely. It's behind Catherine. Uh, so you've got your pattern. I, I really love this. This is really cool, isn't it? Uh, 14 99 for your pattern and all of your navy yarn so you get seven balls of your super chunky yarn as well for 14.99 see this is what i love I, i'd wear it like this even with like a big brooch or something would look really really lovely i love a poncho i love a shawl and poncho like that i think that looks so cool 14.99 and that's for all of your blue this time we have got the red option as well but that's for your blue uh, and this is crochet remember and then you also have got the option of getting seven of your balls of yarn it's that scarlet red i mean it's really bright red isn't it seven of your balls of yarn and your um, pattern for 14.99 i must say the value for money that we've managed to get with mariner is fantastic 14.99 for your shawl um, kit now uh, are we using a bigger crochet hook i'm presuming if we're if we're looking at the super chunky we actually it's it's an eight mil crochet okay. hook so it's not quite as big as we were using for the knitting no, needles no i was actually. going to say i was thinking yeah. my guess would have been the 12 mil so yeah, we've got an yeah. eight millimeter. Yes, hook it this is. Time. It's an eight. Uh, the Brilliant. reason I put it on the model this way round was so that see the pattern. Yeah, and also because when you start to crochet this, you actually start down this bottom corner and work your way out. So, do you crochet in rows? It is in rows, but interestingly, it sort of goes round ah. round the top when I <laughs> when I come and show when I uh, get to show you. I've got to just find where I'm at. Let's see. Okay. If I pop it like that, you can see. Perfect. Oh, so hang on. Where is this in relation to your so, shawl then? This so what's corner. actually happening is we're kind of going, we're kind of going, actually, I've told, no, I've, to, I've told you incorrectly here. I've remembered wrongly uh, between the two shawls. Well, actually, it actually starts in the middle. And as we grow, as, as we do it, we're going to go backwards and forwards. So we're working in rows, but they're kind of curved rows. Ah. And they're going to curve round on each other. And this bottom edge we'll keep is growing. what's going to grow along here. Yes. Okay. Sorry. And the bottom edge is up. then where your tassels will then go. Yeah, and then we put our tassels in at the end. At the end. Ah. It's always nice to put in a tassel. Yes. I think that makes it, doesn't it? It the does. Fringe. It really makes it. It does. Okay, so I've started this off. Um, you start with a ring, which uh, just like we did on the hat, which kind of, when I, I picked it up, I thought, oh, that's a bit odd. We're doing rows, but we're starting with a ring. Right. But you okay. do. You start with a ring and then you work round part of this ring. So I'm up to the third row, which I'm going to show you because I'll show you all the bits that you've got to work into to create these lovely little loops and patterns that you've got. I'm hoping, it never, sh it never shows up quite as well with dark yarn, does it? No, um, I think it's, um, it is clearer to see, isn't it, with the, uh, the with, red, with but uh, uh, in real life you can, it's just on, on camera it's difficult yes. to show the patterns. I'm going to, uh, I should say, send me the light colour for the demo, just because it, uh, it's showing better for you. So we start each row with, five, we're going to start with five chain. Again, this counts as your first stitch, it's bringing it up to the right size for you. So this counts as a double treble and one chain. Now, is this UK terminology or American? It is all UK terminology. Yeah, don't get confused. Yeah. If you're Googling a stitch, make sure you put in UK terminology okay. else you can learn the wrong thing. Okay. I tend to always stick to the UK terms. Yeah. I get a bit 
muddled up otherwise. So, so this counts as a double treble and a chain. Then we're going to find our first chain space, which is here. And into that, we're going to do two trebles. And then we're going to do what's called a pico, which is this lovely little bobbly bit. And it tells you in your, um, it, do, it does tell you somewhere, <laughs> probably not in the, probably in a different bit of the pattern, uh, what your pico is, which okay. actually is, I'm just trying to see how many stitch, I think it's four chain, and then you slip stitch back into the top of your little row of chain. And can you see it makes a, a little, little bobble. bobble? That's called a pico. That's called a pico. I think I've seen those on hats before as well. Yeah, they're often used as a little edging on things as well. You yep. can do them on the edges of blankets and things. So into that chain space, we've done two treble, a pico, and another single treble. Right. Then we're going to do two chain. This is going to jump us over that little pico bobble there. Yeah. And then we're going to do the same into the next chain space over here. Two trebles, one pico, and one treble. Do you teach crochet, crocheting at the Leicestershire Craft Centre as well? I do, actually. Yeah. Do you know what? I always think it's one of the hardest things to teach, actually. Because it's not... It's, when you're learning, it's not an instant thing. So many crafts, you can just pick up and go with them, can't you? Mm -hmm. Crochet, you have to learn those stitches and yeah. you have to get comfortable with how your holds are yeah. And that sometimes takes people a little while. So have you done crochet for a long time? No, I haven't. Um, I've, I've knitted from being about age seven. My, yeah. my mum is a fantastic knitter and crocheter. Um, but, and she taught me to knit, but for some reason could never manage to teach me to crochet. So I've only learned to crochet in about the last eight years. Oh, right. But I really like it because yeah. it's fast and yeah. the variety of patterns you can oh, do, do and stuff. Variety. I've probably got more time to do crochet than I have knitting these yeah. days. Yeah. But, um, but I like both and I like yarn. Do you know what, Vicky? I haven't found a craft I don't like yet. I know, you are, uh, you are very <laughs> I just crafty. like all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, another two chain, mm -hmm. and now where are we? Let me just find. There's a lot. There's a lot in this row. You can see on my thing, I've got lots of little different bits highlighted just for me to follow. And it's while I'm chatting, it's not the easiest. Sorry, it's yeah, all right. No, it's fine. So now we're up to the corner. When we're at the corner, we've got a slightly longer instruction. So we've got two trebles. This is going to make a bigger bit to go around the corner. Two trebles. And a pico. Okay. And a chain. Another three treb three chain. And we're going to do the same again. It's all into this top corner space to let us go around the corner. So another two trebles, one pico and one treble. I can't get my ball of yarn to unwind. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's good to jot down today's date and if you get these patterns home, if you just want to visualise, I'm definitely a visual learner, so to just see it this close, it's really handy. Like you say, quite often it's, it's difficult to teach crochet. I know there's lots of content out there, but as you say, lots of people have different ways of doing it and finding their... They do, and everybody niche. learns at a different speed. You know, some people pick it up really, really quickly, don't they? Um, some people take a little bit longer. Okay, where are we at? Another two chain, and then we're going to go back down this side. So the, the basic pattern is your two trebles, your PK and a single treble and it's just getting them in the right bit as you go round. Right. Okay. So then that will grow as you say in the and sort of semicircle. It will grow round and round. 
And then right down at the bottom, which if I get to that, there is a double treble. I'll show you a double treble, um, which is the only other slightly trickyish stitch that you've got. So again, this is one that once you've got the hang of that pattern, you're going to get on with it really quite quickly um, because it is the same in each space. You can see it's a repeating pattern that's going all the way around. So this is, you know, this is again one you can get going on it and uh, sit in front of the telly. We had a message from Barbara. Hi, Barbara. She said, love the demos, Catherine. Easy to Thank follow you. and just started crochet. Very affordable kits. They really are, aren't they? Order the Spice Shawl, yes. And the hat and rucksack, she said, keep safe. That Spice Shawl, just so you know, we've got less than 10 available. It's been really, really popular. The bag, the crochet bag, it's the first time that we've had a crochet bag on Yarn Lane and they've been very, very popular as well, especially in the Navy. Somebody asked about the hook sizes that are used for the bag and rucksack. That is a three and a half mil because okay. it's, it's a slightly uh, finer yarn. It's a double knit yarn. So that's using a three and a half. Now, obviously, if you know that you're a particularly tight knitter, you might need a bigger uh, or crocheter rather. You might yeah. need a bigger hook. If you're particularly loose, you might need a smaller one just to get your tension. Doesn't matter so much for your rucksack, but for something you're going to wear, like a hat, you want your sizing to come out right. This is um, this is quite a small crochet hook. Do they get smaller than this? Oh gosh, this yes, they'll go really, really, really fine. Really? Yeah, they'll be like. Yeah. Even though this is 3.5, it's still got a nice big handle though, hasn't it? Yeah. So I've got a crochet nice hook comfy. that's very slim all the way down. So this is a lovely one, a clover one. £4.99, this is the one for the bag and um, hat. Let me just show you the double treble, Back. which you have at the beginning and end of every row. So double treble, you go round your hook twice before you go into your space. Pull a loop back, so you can see I've got four loops on my hook. Then we're going to do yarn over two loops, yarn over and two loops, yarn over and the last two loops. So it's a right. really big tall stitch. Okay. Um, and that is that the, to the end so all that's of to the end. You always do that right at the end. Yes. Yes, at the beginning and end of, well, at the beginning you've got your five chain, which counts as a double treble, and at the end you do a double treble. Brilliant. So this pattern has your chains, trebles, double treble, and then that, and, and that's it. So yeah. it only has three stitches that you use. It's yeah. just the order that you put them in. Nice, love that. <laughs> and it is beautiful, isn't it? I mean, the end result They're is really nice. gorgeous. And that's with your eight millimeter crochet hook, am I right? That is correct. That's with the app. Uh, right, so in fact, we've got a review on the eight millimeter hook. Here we go. Um, love the feel of this hook. Works with the yarn smoothly, warm in the hand. We'll be buying more of this make. I mean, I, I didn't know that there are personal preferences on different hooks, but I suppose they all do have a different feel, don't they? Yeah, well, traditionally they were sort of aluminium mm -hmm. uh, metal ones, but these are nice. The bamboo ones, they are. They are warm to hold and they are nice. very smooth. They, yeah, they are nice to use. Oh, lovely. Red, by the way, has been the most popular um, for the shawl. Remember, you get all of your um, yarn. How many? Seven of these. Seven of these super chunky yarn balls. And then you still get your pattern as well for $14.99. And that's what you can make with the red. And it is a really lovely, bright scarlet red. We love, love, love that. Okay. One more project that we want to show you today. Uh, I say that, you get two really, don't you? Um, do you want to do the navy first? The navy is the one that Catherine's going to be working with. It's sea green and navy. So you have three of your navy, and then you've also got one, two, three, four, five of the sea green, which is this lovely sort of, um, teal colour it's gorgeous together and that is to make the big chunky scarf and also the mittens now this is obviously a different colour way we've got these ones coming up next but how nice are they gosh they're so lovely and warm really lovely and you're super chunky yarn I like those a lot oh they're really nice um so that's in the sea green and navy we do have this colourway that I'm wearing though which is your purple um, it's called violet and silver so you get probably not going to be able to reach them all but I'll just show you you get three of the silver and then you get five of these yes five of your super chunky purples as well um, 
five of your super chunky in purple. And there's the uh, the scarf. Oh, it's behind me. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And this is using, right, this is a technique that was new to you as well. It was, yes. I had to learn something new. Oh, that is a nice big scarf, isn't it? And these are lovely, I must say. Right, I'm just going to be chilling here. So why is this different? What's this technique called? They feel so, thick. Do you know what I mean? They, they are quite... Layered. Well, for a start, it's super chunky. And yeah. then um, on the scarf, to get the pattern, you, it's, it's what's known as tapestry crochet. Um, and what happens is you carry your yarn through the rows, which is what I'm going to show you to do. And I did, ha did have a conversation with my lovely mum about this because she's just finished the most amazing blanket in tapestry oh. crochet. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll have to get a poster you for a picture. You need mum on here. I know, get on the tech, mum. Post a picture. <laughs> get her on the telly on the show. So what size hook are we using we're on a We're on a lovely big chunky 12 mil hook. Oh, nice. Yes. We have got a 12 mil hook. Nice big chunky one. Just 349. I'm just lovely and cozy at this. this now amazing. you've got a chart to follow with this. Okay. So you are working line by line. Um, on the odd rows, you're reading right to left. Mm -hmm. So I'm not very good at the rights and lefts. On the even rows, you're reading left to right. So I have got up to row six. Okay. Each row starts with a little chain. Now my first one, uh, all the stitches are simply a double crochet. So if you've not had a go at tapestry crochet before, this is a great first project because your stitches aren't difficult, it's all doubles. Right. Because the thing with this is carrying your yarn along. So I'm just going to do a single navy double and then I've got to do seven of the teal. Now as you do your uh, stitch into the next one. Uh, now with, the, with this particular pattern it tells you to work into the front loop of each stitch. Quite often when we do doubles we go right through the top of the stitch like that and right. go through both bits. This particular pattern you're just going through that front loop. So we're going to and what you've got to do is have your other colour in the way because <laughs> you're going to catch it in at the same time. So you pull your loop through and then as you put your art yarn over can you see it's catching that dark colour in as well. I'm going to slide both off. You need a fairly tight tension on this. Yeah they are all sort of jam packed your stitches together aren't they? Yes because that hides that the reasonably tight tension hides that row of navy that's sliding along inside. So as you're going along, if you think to yourself, oh, it's getting a bit, a bit, um, a bit loopy, Loose. and I can see it, you can just give it a little pull. Because I, oh, I am right. not, I am not the tightest. No. I've got a fairly loose tension when I crochet, so I found that I had to kind of just give it a little pull to okay. keep it tight as I went along. You can see it's catching in that navy at the same time. I'm going to pull that tight. Totally lost count. What have I done? One, two, three, four. We're definitely not rushing you, but we've got about five minutes, <laughs> just so you're aware. That's yes, that's because you've done so many projects for us today. <laughs> Even just in this hour. I just, as long as I've told you the right bits for the right project, you look, you might, I might have got them all muddled up. And you're I'm none <laughs> the wiser, I don't know, so <laughs> you're fine with us. Well, the, the only thing I need to particularly tell you with this, which I can tell you, one, two, three, four, five, six. When you get to the, so the last stitch before you change colour, mm -hmm. so I've got to do seven teal, and then I'm going to swap to the navy. So start your last teal, then swap to your navy. And what do you do with the teal at this point? Just it's leave just it, going to stay away. there because that's going to then get carried across the navy bit. Right. But take your navy and use that to do the last part of the stitch so you've changed colour before you do the stitch in ah. that colour. Okay. Okay. That's the thing to remember. Now I've got another just single navy one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that navy 
and I'm actually going to pick up my teal again straight away to swap back to do that single stitch. Right. Okay. And now I've got a single teal. So I'm going to do exactly the same. This was quite a good bit to show you to keep swapping, wasn't it? So like that, and then swap back to the navy to finish the stitch. Okay, hopefully that is making sense. Yeah. So I've got my little bit of paper so I can just follow which row that I'm doing so you don't get muddled up. It's quite That's quite a good tip. If you struggle to see which row you're on, use a little bit of paper just to... Uh, Ah, yeah, Put it idea. under where you are and then you can see. Okay, I've now got to do three navy stitches. So I'm going to do that and I'm catching the teal in this time to carry it across the back. So in that way, both colours are sort of travelling around the scarf <laughs> the whole time. But it means... You haven't got lots of, you know, you can change colour. You haven't got lots and lots of ends to mm -hmm. be tying in or stitching in afterwards. It's basically the same on both sides And it's quite as sort well. of a sporadic pattern, isn't it, anyway, that it's... Yes, it's sort of it's a basket weave, but because you've got lots of single ones, it doesn't come out as a really solid yeah, basket yeah. weave. But it's, it's pretty, I, I liked it. Um, it's not as fast a technique okay. as some of the other crochet. Did you enjoy it though? I did. I, do you know what? I love learning a new thing. I know, you I do. really like You're learning saying, a new thing. So it. I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is good. This is good. And I, I liked that it made me think about my tension actually yeah. And, yeah. and just make it really nice and neat as you're going along. So uh, if you've not had a go at it, I'd, I'd recommend having a go. Oh, it's good absolutely, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do you have a favourite project, Catherine? Is Ooh, there a favourite? So if I was going to go home and carry on one of these today, yeah. um, do you know what? I might finish the, the lacy shawl. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's gone now. Uh, the, the lacy shawl one, is really one, I really liked lovely. that. Yeah. yeah, that was gorgeous. With the spice colour, no. The spice and the green. We had it in apple green as well. This one. Yeah, the spice I think I'd choose out. the green. I'd go for the green myself. The but then I'm quite one. keen on the red shawl too. Oh, yeah. Too much choice Should today. Too, choice too much choice. choice. <laughs> uh, that was the the, uh, the the green shawl. Thank you ever so much today. That's okay. It's Absolute been so pleasure. lovely to have you all day long. When are you back with us? I believe in a couple of weeks, 20 Oh, you already have your I projects think. for Sewing Street, don't you? I know. I oh, know. No. I'll have them made this afternoon. <laughs> in fact, your mom has got in touch with us. She said oh, it's a she? photograph. Gosh, oh, look at yes. this. I know, isn't it amazingly oh, beautiful? Word. Right, so is this crochet tapestry crochet so that was, again? That's a tapestry crochet blanket that she she made, yes. Oh, wow. I know. Very she's talented a, She's mom. such a clever lady. Oh, that's so good. I, honestly, I keep saying to my mom, she's, she used to do lots of knitting, I remember when we were young. Mum, get back into it, get back into yeah. it. I'm trying to encourage it because it's such a lovely thing to do, isn't it? Especially, Especially at, at this time of year when you can't really get out so much, you yeah. know, it gives you something to do. Absolutely. It's very good if you, I mean, I, I get a little bit of arthritis. If you actually do have a bit of trouble, to do a bit of knitting and crochet keeps your fingers Exercise. flexible. It's yeah. good for you. Absolutely. Thank In you ever so much. In more ways than one. Thank you very, very much. All the great demos today. We'll see you soon. Um, also, Barbara sent in a photograph as well. We're having a look at it in just a moment. We'll have a look in a moment. Right, so recapping um, the one that I've got in front of me. Let's do it from here. So you have two of the silver. The violet, you have five chunky yarns. And then you also have your pattern, which uh, is, is, of course, for the, the, the mittens and your scarf. And there's your pattern as well. Uh, so this one, very, very popular indeed. And it was just $17.99. The value for money has been incredible, I must say. All of the value for money on your lane is always amazing. And if you've already paid your post and packaging to down Sewing Street, it's only one p and p today for yarn lane as well. And those mittens are really nice. Now, we also have it in the colourway that um, Catherine was working with, which is your sea green and navy. So you have five of your sea green, super chunky, and you have three of your navy. Plus your pattern. It's been a very, very busy day all round today. Um, it's definitely worth it if I were you. Go to yarnlane.com and have a look on the website at all of the different kits that we've had because we've done a bit of a pit stop of everything today. Speak to the customer service team if you've got any problems, they'll be able to help you. But whether it be 
be the shawls, the poncho, uh, the, 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 the uh, bag that we started with, with the hats. That was a really popular one as well. All gorgeous. Barbara, honestly, this is lovely. This is Paul's gorgeous mum, Barbara. And she's ever so crafty as well. She's very crafty. Not only did she uh, do her knitting, she's also wallpapered, um, done the wallpaper in behind as well. She did the wallpaper in herself. Well impressed, Paul saying. We're very impressed, Barbara. Um, Paul's done amazing today. It's been so lovely to be back with our lovely Paul. And I'm sure we'll see him soon. You'll have John Scott back on Sewing Street tomorrow from 8 o'clock. And of course, Yarn Lane is also back tomorrow. I'm not sure who's John's guest tomorrow. It's Anna. Anna on Yarn Lane tomorrow um, with socks and books. And Victoria Carrington's going to be on Sewing Street. So join John Scott bright and early tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I'm back next Thursday on Sewing Street. I will see you then. See you, Paul. Bye, Paul. One night only. He'll be back. He'll be back. John's coming up in the morning uh, at 8 o'clock. He'll see you then.